Hello, Lawrence Grayson back again for shortformvideo.com with not so much a tutorial today, but more of an article on the best After Effects keyboard shortcuts that you probably never use. Now, obviously, I'm going to say probably because uh, some of you may well have a handle on all of the After Effects keyboard shortcuts and uh, don't really need this guide, in which case I'd stop watching and go and do something a little bit more useful. Um, for the rest of us uh, who may not use that many keyboard shortcuts, um, what I'm going to do today is uh, cover off some of the more obscure keyboard shortcuts that you may not have come across. Now before we start, I'd just like to stress that I am using Adobe After Effects CS5 here, but I'm pretty sure that the, uh, the shortcut keys that I'll be showing you are universal to CS5, CS4 and CS3. So let's start with um, the marker shortcut, the create marker shortcut. Now markers are used for a variety of reasons in After Effects. Um, if you're a Flash creator, you may want to create markers with XMP metadata to be used as cue points. You may also be taking this project out into Premiere Pro, in which case a composition marker corresponds to sequence markers in Premiere Pro, or a layer marker can correspond to a clip marker um, when you import the After Effects project into Premiere. One of the things I tend to use markers for most is uh, just setting up key points in the uh, in the composition that I'm working on for aligning other assets too. Now there are two ways you can um, add a marker. You can select a layer like the composition layer I have selected here and tap the times button on the number pad and that will create a generic marker like this one here on the layer that you have selected. To delete a marker you right click on it and uh, select it from the pop-up menu if you just have the uh, composition selected and you tap the marker, it will create a composition marker. And as I mentioned earlier, that corresponds to a sequence marker in Premiere Pro. Now, something else you may not know about markers is that uh, they're a great way of synchronizing visual events to an audio track. So what you can do is tap the full stop key on the number pad to create an audio only preview. And by doing that, you can play back the audio only and create a marker on the audio track to visually indicate where a particular sequence of music is starting. So let me demonstrate. Tap. So um, what I've just done there is create the marker. It means you can then synchronize um, assets on the timeline to that marker and if you hold down shift while you're dragging it you'll find that it will lock to that marker. So that's pretty handy. Now the other way to create markers um, particularly useful if you're creating uh, flash projects is to create a numbered marker and you'd simply do that by holding down shift and pressing one of the number keys on the top of the keyboard. So I just hit Shift and 1, and that created a numbered, a marker numbered 1. Number 3, Shift and 4, Shift and 7. And these will help you uh, create cue points for your Flash project. Now, if you want to create metadata to go along with these markers, simply double-click on the marker, and it'll bring up the composition marker panel where you can add web links, the URL, frame targets, all sorts of uh, flash cue point information and that I won't go into here. But if you are creating flash projects, then you'll probably know what to do with this. Frankly, I don't. I, I can't say I use flash at all. And finally, there's another keyboard shortcut that is extremely useful um, related to markers. So say, for example, we've created a, a generic marker, a layer marker on comp1 at a point that we want to add another asset, but we only want the asset to be on screen for a specific amount of time, and we know we want it to finish at about this point. So we create another marker. If you hold down Alt and click on two individual markers, the info panel will be updated to show you the exact distance between those two keyframe markers. So now if I wanted to create a composition that fits exactly between those two markers, all I have to do now is hit Control N to create a new composition, type 3 seconds and 23 frames into the duration, and hit OK. And uh, just to demonstrate that it's worked, let me bring in our new composition. Hold down Shift to snap it to the markers. And there it is, exactly 
the length that we marked up on our previous layer. Now while we're on the subject of layers, and there's another handy keyboard shortcut you might find useful, if you want to shift a selected layer up and down in your composition, obviously you can drag and drop it with the mouse, but there's also a keyboard shortcut for this, so if you hold down Control and Alt, you can move the selected layer up and down simply by tapping up and down on the cursor keys. Now if you're working with multiple solo layers, like these, and you want to uh, just select one without having to deselect several others, just hold down the Alt key and click on the layer you want to solo, and we'll isolate that one. Equally, if you hold down the Alt key and select solo, it will remove the old one and replace it with a new solo track. Next on the list is the uh, rotation keyboard shortcut. Um, if you have an asset that you want to rotate, um, obviously you can tap R and bring up the rotation values, but if you just want to play around with it, um, you can just use the plus and minus keys on your number pad. Now this will apply a one degree rotation, both clockwise and anti-clockwise, but if you want to shift a little bit further, hold down shift and tap the plus or minus keys on the, the uh, number pad, and it'll do it in 10 degree increments. So that's kind of handy too. Now if you're working with one monitor, you may find that After Effects has a tendency to get a little bit cramped, particularly if you're using multiple layers. Now I've covered this particular um, tip in a previous um, After Effects Quick Tip video, but uh, it's worth covering again. If you tap the uh, Accent Grave key, or the tilde key, which is just it's the one just beneath the Escape key, the top left of your keyboard, um, what After Effects will do is expand the uh, pane underneath the mouse, or whichever one's selected, um, and make it full screen. So if I hover the mouse over the composition panel, type the tilde key, it will give me a solo um, expansion of that panel. Tap it again to restore the panel. Um, also, if I go to the composition panel, and this is where it gets really handy, if you're working with a massive number of layers, tap the tilde key, and it will give you a composition uh, panel on its own. So uh, you can then do all your work on the layers. Obviously, what you won't get there is the, uh, the preview. So just tap the tilde key and bring it back. Another way of giving yourself just a little bit more space is to hold down Control and Backslash. And that will just remove the uh, Windows toolbar from the top of After Effects. Um, frankly, it's not doing anything useful, so uh, you may as well get rid of it, and that'll give you just a little bit more space to play with. Now, if things are still looking a little bit cramped, um, it might be because you've got all the indicator layers um, set on screen, particularly if you've, you've got a, a huge bunch of um, maybe 3D layers. Um, the boundary boxes do tend to uh, get a little bit complicated and get in the way, but there's an easy way to toggle the visibility of these on and off, and that's Control, Shift, and H. Just tap that, and it will remove the boundary boxes of all your assets so you can get a closer look at what's underneath. And again, Control shift h brings them all back again. And my last uh, obscure keyboard shortcut, it's probably the obscurest one of them all, you probably already know that the info panel will show the RGBA values of uh, whatever pixel happens to be beneath the very, very top of your mouse pointer as you hover over your frame. Um, if you actually hold down the control button um, while you do this, it'll actually increase the sample point to a 5x5 five five pixel um, area, which is really kind of handy if, for example, you're hovering over um, an area with um, adjacent pixels, different, differently colored adjacent pixels, um, like the one I have here. If you hold down control, it will give you um, a sample value of that 5x5 five five pixel area rather than just a simple pixel value. So if I uh, just release control, you'll see we've got 473319 as an RGB value. If I hold down control, it changes radically because, of course, we've got that dark pixel next to a lot of light pixels. So if we're looking for that kind of median color, holding down control lets us know that our median color is actually 1571324. 
So that's that. That's a little wrap up of the obscure um, After Effects shortcuts you probably never use. Um, if you've got some suggestions of your own that you'd like to share with me and uh, anyone else watching this video, by all means, leave a comment. Um, if you feel I've missed any, um, by all means, tell me that I'm an idiot. But overall, I hope you found this useful. Uh, that's it for now. I'll catch you next time.